Good morning, first grade. Um, today is the 6th. We follow it up. It's Monday. So if today is Monday, yesterday was Sunday. And we abbreviate that S-U-N period. Yesterday was Sunday. Today is Monday. That's M-O-N period. And that means that tomorrow will be Tuesday. That's T-U-E-S period. Tuesday. This is the start of Holy Week. Um, perhaps yesterday at your church. Maybe your service talked about Palm Sunday with the palm branches. Part of your religion assignment this week will be to learn about Holy Week. And today it's going to start talking about Palm Sunday. Um... So make sure that you are watching the video each day for religion. There's a link included and I'll make sure to send it separately as well. Plus there's something for you to wear every day, something for you to do every day, and something for you to share every day. Um, so that will take us through religion for this week. Um, let's move into Super Kits. And here we go. You should be in your Super Kids Word Workbook on page 16. We're going to talk about the letter Y this week. And I'll try to be still on my chair. It's very creaky. Um, the letter Y. We know that the letter Y is a consonant. And it can stand for the Y sound, as in yes or yellow. But now we get to learn that Y can be a vowel. So it can also be a vowel in certain words. So I want you to look at this sentence right here. Y can stand for I. Anytime we see the letter I with a line right over the top, that means that it's a long vowel sound. And it's reminding us with these two words up here. These are two words we know. We know by my. So we can be reminded that those two letters, those Y's and those two words, excuse me, are saying I with a long vowel sound. So anytime that we have the letter Y at the end of the word, and if the word only has Y as its vowel, if there are no other vowels in it, then I know the word will have the long I sound represented by the Y at the end. So on number one here, what is Sal doing? Right, he's crying. So the word is cry. C-R-Y. Cry cry. And how many vowels were in this word? Just one. So right here in this little box, we're going to write a number one, cry. There's one vowel in the word cry, and the vowel happens to be the letter Y. Let's look at number two. Number two, Alf has already washed the dishes, and now it is time to dry the dishes. Dry. It may sound like a J, but it's actually a D and an R together. Drrr, I. And we're going to spell that with that Y because it's coming at the end of the word. And we need to count our consonants. How many consonants are in this word? Only one. Now, for numbers 3, 4, 5, and 6... I want you to complete <clears throat> I want you to complete it by tracing the letters on the handwriting lines, adding y to each word, and making sure that you write the number of vowels that each word has. Make sure you read the word aloud to yourself. Remember, the long i in the blue circle is to remind you that the y stands for i in each word. Go ahead and pause this right now until you're finished.
Now you should be turning the page, or maybe sliding over, I'm not sure which one, I can't see your books, um, to page 17. And we're going to learn about another way that Y can be a vowel. I gotta scoop my papers over. So, <clears throat> we're gonna do the same thing as before. Let's look at the top, right here by our star. Y can be a vowel. So it's telling us that same information, but this time we get to learn that Y can stand for E. Remember I told you that long line at the top above the letter it means it's going to say its name. E. Let's look at our two sample words. I have the word happy and the word silly. Happy and silly. Now, when a word ends in Y and it has another vowel that's not next to the Y, the Y stands for the long E sound. Oop, sorry. So let's look at number one together. I want you to say, golly, golly. Do you know how to spell golly? Mm, golly, G-O-L-L. -L. You're right, with a Y at the end, golly. All right, let's look at the little dog next to golly standing on its tail. It's actually a puppy, puppy. So when I trace the word P, U, P, P, I can remember that if I hear the E sound at the end of the word and there was another vowel that separated by some other letters, I know I'll spell it with a Y at the end. Puppy. This time I'm going to count the vowels. I have a U and a Y acting as an E. So I have two vowels, so I'm writing a two in the box. <coughs> Let's slide over to number two. Number two, we've been talking about these animals all year, but we've been calling them a rabbit. And now we finally get to call it a cute little B, U, N, N. And because my U is my other vowel and there are other letters in between, we're going to end in a Y. And the word is bunny, bunny. And how many vowels are in there? The U? And the Y. That's right, it's two. So, what I'd like you to do is the same as the other. I'd like for you to complete this page. You should trace the letters, you should add Y to each word, and you should make sure that you write the number of vowels in each word in the box. Please make sure that you say the word aloud to know that you're saying it correctly. Go ahead and pause your video now so that you can continue this page. This is a reminder. Fry, like fry an egg, will make the long I sound. And puppy, the cute little puppy, is going to make the long E sound at the end because there are two vowels. Let's go ahead and go on to number Page number 18. Let me turn my page. All right. I want you to look at the first word at the top. <coughs> How many vowels are in this first word? Markup. All right. Here we go. How many vowels are in this first word? There are two. What are they? U and Y. U and Y. So I want you to write the number two in the box. Now, when a word ends in Y and it has at least one other vowel that's not next to the Y, the Y stands for a long E. 
So our word is hungry. Hungry. I'm going to circle this E to show which sound the Y is making. Hungry. And now I'm going to draw a line from the word to the picture that it matches. Sal is hungry. Let's look at number two. How many vowels are in this number two word, the second word here? Just one, one vowel. So I'm gonna put a one in the box. When Y is at the end of the word and it only, and it's the only vowel in the word, it stands for a long I. So the word is cry, cry. What sound do we hear at the end? A long I. So we're going to circle that word, I mean, excuse me, that letter here. And then we're going to draw a picture from the word to the picture that it matches. Cry. I want you to complete the following steps for each remaining word. Determine how many vowels each word has and write the number in the box. Read the word to show, <clears throat> read the word to yourself and then circle the E or the I in the circles to show what the sound the Y stands for. And last, you need to draw a line from the word to the picture that it matches. When you're finished, ask a grown up in the house to check and make sure that you've put them in the right spots. And now let's turn to the last page, which has the spelling words for the page. Let's talk about our pattern words on the side here. The first set of pattern words all end in the letter Y. Remember, if it's the only vowel, it's going to make a long I sound. So my words are buy, fly, cry, and try. Next pattern is E L L Y. E L L Y. Remember, I have two vowels this time, one, two, and when I have two vowels, we're going to make the long E sound, E. So number five is belly, six is jelly, and seven is smelly. And our last pattern is U, N, N, Y. I have two vowels, so it's going to be any, any. So here we go. Number eight is bunny. Number nine is funny. Number 10 is sunny. Sunny. Let's look at box number one here. This is a gross looking <laughs> fly. F L Y. We don't have to do anything else to that. I want you to look at numbers two, three, and four and decide which of the spelling words would be for each of those pictures. Make sure that you spell it correctly. Make sure that you look at the words over here so that you know how to spell them correctly on your page. And that will complete page 19 for today, and that's all that we're doing in the Word Workbook. And the last thing we're going to do is to read through the story on your backpack page. I'm going to go over the words first for the Super Kids Super Short. <clears throat> we have the words where a Y equals, oh, let me use a different color, where a Y equals an I sound. So we have my, fly, by, sky, why, dry. Next, we have the words where the Y equals an E sound. We have happy, rainy, messy, splashy, that's a long one, mucky, 
lumpy, funny, dizzy, silly, really. And last we have our story word, which is just one to remember. Children. Children. So those are the words for the story. Make sure that you're practicing them because you're supposed to read this every day for fluency. Here we go. This week, the Super Kids Super Short is going to be a poem. So that means it's going to have rhyming parts and it's also going to have a certain sound when you read it. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to read it and follow along with my pen so that you can make sure that you're in the correct spot with me. Then I'll read it again so that you can hear the correct pacing or the correct sounding of the poem. This is called My Happy Rainy Day. In the summer, when it's rainy, do not sit inside. Stomp in messy, splashy puddles. Run and jump and slide. Did you hear how it rhymed? Inside, slide. Grab big globs of mucky mud and make a lumpy pie. Quack back to funny ducks that fly by in the sky. Tilt your chin up. That means to lift up your head backwards a little bit. Lift your hands up. Feel rain on your skin. Spin until you are quite dizzy. Grin a silly grin. Remember, a grin is a kind of smile. If the other children ask you, why won't you get dry? Yell, getting wet is fun. I like rain. That's why. So that's how the story sounds. I'm going to read it for you once more. And this time I'm not going to read it in a slow way. I'm just going to read it in the regular way so that you can hear the sound of the poem. Here we go. My happy rainy day. In the summer when it's rainy, do not sit inside. Stomp in messy, splashy puddles. Run and jump and slide. Grab big globs of mucky mud and make a lumpy pie. Quack back to funny ducks that fly by in the sky. Tilt your chin up. Lift your hands up. Feel rain on your skin. Spin until you are quite dizzy. Grin a silly grin. If the other children ask you, why won't you get dry? Yell, Getting wet is fun. I like rain. That's why. So that's how that poem is supposed to sound. As you read it each day this week, see if you can get a little bit better with your flow each time that you read it. <clears throat> Remember, this story is in the backpack page, and you don't need to do any other work in the backpack page except for reading this one for today. The last thing that I want to show you, let's see... I'm going to talk about the math. Today's math is um, a review, sort of like a review before the test. If we were having a test, we're not having a test. Um, so if you've already picked up your math workbook from school this week, then you can just open up to page 371. Otherwise, you can print it out from the PDF that was sent. Um, <clears throat> On numbers three four five and six if you don't think that you need to use this you don't have to but if it's something that you think will help you then you absolutely can use it on number seven you do not have to make a 10 to solve because we didn't talk about that way 
but we do still want you to solve 13 minus 4. So just make sure that you have an answer here, solving it the best way that you can. On number 8, we've talked about fact families a lot this school year. Um, so everybody should be able to fill that in. Just remember, a fact family, you can only use the same three numbers. So you can only use the 7, the 8, and the 15. But you have to put them in the different orders to show how the fact family fits all together. And then you should do 9, 10, 11, and 12. And just write your answers down. If you, have, if you can't print and you haven't gotten your book, you can just write the answers down on a blank piece of paper and send a picture. Uh, the last thing I want to remind you is that <clears throat> we'd love to see a picture of any of the things that you do this week for religion. Remember, there's something for you to wear each day, and we'd love to see a picture of you. And on that note, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.